Well, welcome to the three episode of Microalgae Culture Workshop. My name is Rosalyn Stoner, for those of you that I don't know, and that's Matt. And I'm with the University of Florida Archives. And I'm supposed to turn on the mic. All right, again, welcome. This is the Microalgae Culture Workshop. And we, we are, are holding this to... as a result of some of you who asked uh, last year when we put on a couple of other hatchery workshops that you would like one addressing phytoplankton culture. So it took us a while to figure out who to get to be our guest speaker, and we never knew at the time that we would be able to get possibly what I'm sure is the nation's expert. So um, we're very fortunate, and I'm going to let um, Hoi Ping Young introduce our speaker in a few minutes. Um, and as you know, we had to deter this workshop in January because the government shut down. So I hope not interfering too much with your production schedule this week, but I'm glad to see the attendance. And um, before we get started, a couple of housekeeping rules. Obviously, mute your phone. Restrooms are immediately to your right out the door, or we have a larger set of restrooms down the hall and way on your right. We've got plenty of drinks there. We've got coffee. Um, we'll go over the agenda in a minute. Um, I just want to say that it's going to be free flowing. We want to make it interactive. Uh, the only thing we'll stick to schedule wise is as soon as we know that lunch is here, we will break for lunch. I also want to make note that tomorrow morning, starting at eight o'clock, we will not meet here. Um, is this okay, volume? Uh, we will be meeting at the UF IFAS Nature Coast Biological Station. That's where we will be doing the hands-on demonstrations. Again, this is day 24. Let's follow it into, you basically will dead end to the station. It's a tall green building. You will not be able to park there. Um, so you will park just one block to the east of that. There's parking spaces there at the marine, and you can just walk down. So we'll be there at 8 o'clock. So right around 10 and then we'll take a break and then come back here for the rest of the day. Try and early so you have plenty of time to travel back home. Uh, so unfortunately the building um, is secured, it is locked. You have a code here to access the elevator, so jot that down 1030, then press the star uh, symbol. All right, let's see what else. All right, we are making this available live via Zoom, and that's what Natalie will be working, and that is why we want to um, uh, use microphones, again, to make this interactive and to address your questions and answers. We will have to bring over the microphone to you, so those attending can listen as well, or the speaker can repeat the question. Um, uh, with uh, Dr. Whitford's um, the blessings, we will be able to video record this and make this available later online for you to review. And that would be at the Shellfish, Shellfish, Shellfish Aquaculture um, website. All right, we'll also give a thanks to Natalie Simon, who's done a lot of work to make sure that all the technical aspects hopefully work. And also to Jamie in Dr. Yang's lab. She also has been very helpful in gathering up supplies for tomorrow's demos, etc. A lot of work has gone on um, to do this. Um, you know what, uh, Hai Ping, I'm going to like turn it over to you now and then we... Oh, my name is Hai Ping Yang. I do not know, I know most of you. I know all of you probably. Most of you. And uh, thank you for coming. And uh, introduce Dr. Okay. okay. Dr. Wickfoss. Dr. Dr. Wickfoss is the director of the Marine Lab of the NOAA, uh, located in Wickford, Wick Wick right? Wick Milford. Milford. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't I didn't <laughs> okay, not get used to this. And Dr. Wickfoss research field is a uh, kind of uh, Phycology, microalgae, and aquaculture, because of the sharp to the algae, right? So, so his research, research, I'm looking at his uh, 
probably in the binder, you will see the, in, the basic introduction for uh, his research. It's involved in uh, IOD uh, culture and the psychology of our, um, the nutrition of the IOD for biovalve and the use of the flu cytometer for uh, psychology and for the uh, biovalve bio immunology. And the other two research fields that he he has been done as a um, probiotic bacteria for use in the shellfish aquaculture and uh, the harmful algae blue. And yeah, uh, he has so many uh, publications. I know my, one of my uh, students uh, trying to work on the shellfish uh, hemocytes and uh, immuno. We 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 searched his the, uh, his uh, paper is coming out a whole lot list. So. Thank you so much for willing to come in all the way from there to here to the floor. This is very hot. So I think that's we are very glad to have him because the doctor must be said, Dr. Wickforce is the yeah, I think that's the most uh, <laughs> famous expert in the algae culture and in the shellfish aquaculture. <laughs> I know, unfortunately, that's not our fault, right? <laughs> okay, and then I will turn this to Dr. Okay, I have a microphone. Oh, so I can turn on this, right? And the group here for the invitation to be here. Despite the fact that it's not January and I'm not escaping um, an ice storm, <laughs> Um, I'm very happy to have a several day vacation from bureaucracy and administration uh, and instead to spend a few days talking um, with you about topics I enjoy much more than administration and bureaucracy and that's uh, microalgae and shellfish nutrition. And um, I thank Hui Ping for the introduction. Um, I have to say that the practical aspects of phytoplankton use in shellfish aquaculture is not a very popular field in science. And so it was not very, uh, I wasn't uh, competing against very many people to study this and it was very hard to fund actually. So, um, you know, I work for a federal agency for NOAA and uh, it was just because um, I think, you know, government labs can, uh, can follow topics, practical topics that, um, the academic community um, either doesn't want to or, or doesn't choose to, to follow as, as you know, allowed um, me and other people in Milford and collaborators all around the world to chip away at the knowledge base of practical aspects of phytoplankton and, uh, and shellfish aquaculture. So I'm gonna try in the next two days to share a lot of stuff with you. I'm gonna run stuff slides by very quickly um, and I don't necessarily expect you to assimilate every single uh, tidbit of information but I'd like it to be more of like just washing stuff over you so you've heard a lot of things at least once some things I'll repeat that I think are really important and uh, the other thing I'd mention is I would like this to be very interactive so for the shy people in the room I want to start out by forcing you to to say something uh, to the rest of the group here. So I'm going to ask that the microphone be passed around and each of you uh, let me know who you are, where you come from, why you're here, and tell me one thing you know about microalgae. It can be the most interesting thing, it can be the weirdest thing, it can be the most uh, useful thing. It's going to get really harder as we get toward the end of the room, so be thinking about uh, what, you, what you're going to tell me and everyone else. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Bobby Edwards. I'm actually a PhD student at FAMU, studying microalgae uh, for biofuel or pharm pharmaceutical use. And I'm also a member of the Oyster Company based in Oyster Bay, Florida. And what, what do you know about microalgae that is interesting? It's a great useful fuel source for the future to be self-sustainable. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm Mario Marquez, NOAA fellow uh, out of Florida A&M, um, studying uh, biogeochemistry of oyster aquaculture, and uh, I'm also a member of the oyster company out of Oyster Bay, Florida. And what I know about microalgae is that it can do really good things, and it can also do a couple of bad things. Okay. <laughs> 
I'm Bill Middleton, and I'm experimenting with uh, with uh, hatching clams in synthetic water, and uh, I want to learn what I can about growing microalgae to feed them. Oh boy, um, Scotty Boots, uh, <laughs> current director of Florida Shellfish. <laughs> Fascinating something about uh, single cell plants. Uh, let's look at our isocrisis. We think about it all the time. Well, let's think about it. It's a dinoflagellate. It moves. It's a plant that moves. It also has a primitive photoreceptor. It's phototaxic. Let's think if this would have happened on the terrestrial side of life and um, our plants could see us and could uh, run away. It would be like you going out to harvest your broccoli. The broccoli saw you coming and started running from you. You'd have to go chase down your broccoli. So um, stop there. Um, Mike Roach, Southern Cross Sea Farms. I run a hatchery. I just like the different shapes of the algae. <laughs> Good. You, you'll like the first part of the talk then. <laughs> My name is John Gill. I am uh, one of the owners of Southern Cross and um, and probably know less than anybody about algae in here. But uh, uh, Mike likes the shapes. I like the colors. So uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Doug Telgen, uh, I'm a clam farmer here in Cedar Key. I have a small hatchery. Uh, back in the mid 90s, Dr. Whitford was only the, one of the few places where you could get algae besides uh, University of Texas. I'm Caitlin Robitaille. I'm from the Dolphin, I'm from Dolphin Island. I work for the Auburn University Shellfish Lab as a research tech. And one interesting thing I've learned is that our TISO is pretty hardy because even when we were having horrible pH issues, they were still growing. So they're pretty hardy. My name's Anthony Hinkle. Um, I'm one of the owners of Clamtastic Seafood, and I have two clam hatcheries here in Cedar Key. And um, I don't need a lot of algae, <laughs> a lot of production. <laughs> okay. My name's Lee Bryan, and I have a just a clam farmer with our own small hatchery. And um, the most thing I could say about it is every bottle's terribly inconsistent. So uh, I need some consistency. <laughs> okay. Hi, good morning. I'm Scott Hollingsworth. I'm the CEO of Alga Feed. I'm here with the team from Alga Feed. You'll meet the rest of them. And I do know that there's no substitute for, for microalgae in, in many phases of everyone's life here. And I don't think anyone's ever had a tremendously perfect day because of their algae. But they ain't working, is it? I'm uh, Aaron Welch. I'm with Two Dock Shellfish. We have a little hatchery over in the Vero Beach area that uh, isocrisis dies if you look at it cross <laughs> I'm Brendan Meisinger, also with Two Dock Shellfish, and we grow our algae in tubes. <laughs> uh, I'm Tara Wyman. I work, I'm the laboratory and production manager of Algal Feed, as Scott had mentioned earlier. And something interesting about microalgae is it also produces not just asexually, but sexually. Um, I'm uh, Philippe Bois uh, from Algafid as a chief science officer and uh, obviously we grow algae and algae is the most efficient photosynthetic organism uh, or one of the most efficient on earth. My name is Justin Branch with the Duke Energy Mariculture Center in Crystal River. I don't know a whole lot about algae and that's why I'm here. Uh, Rhett Gehring, I'm also with the Duke Energy Mariculture Center, and one of the cool things about algae is not just important as food for bivalves, but for us it's important for our fish ponds and helping with things like that. Hello, my name is Ryan Winnett. I am a hatchery tech with Sea Ventures Clam Company. I'm new to the industry and just here to learn as much as I can. Hi, I'm uh, Victoria Parks. I'm co-founder of Sea Venture Clam Co. Um, and there, instead of calling it microalgae culturing, we call it uh, creative algal management. 
Uh, I'm Richard Baptiste, Assistant Project Manager, Facility Supervisor uh, at Center for Aquaculture and Stock Enhancement um, at Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institution at Florida Atlantic University. How's that? Um, anyway, um, been growing algae forever, ran the big clam hatchery back in the Harbor Branches um, when we did all the training programs. And uh, I figured I could always learn more from a gentleman like Gary, so that's why I'm here. And my line, and I'm happy I'm not the last one, is I always, always tell everybody, get good at growing microalgae before you ever, underline ever, think of running a shellfish hatchery. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Matthew Morgan. Um, I'm a lab assistant in Hopkins Lab at the University of Florida. <laughs> yeah, all of us are here. Um, and uh, I just think it's funny how you can find microalgae growing in a dirty puddle, but you can't make it grow in some sterilized bottles. Uh, good morning, my name is I came from China and I'm a visiting scholar uh, in Dr. Yang's uh, lab and uh, my major is uh, marine ecology. I know that the microalgae is uh, very important in the marine ecology and we are doing some research on the very kitchen of uh, uh, microalgae diversity uh, in the South China Sea by using the ITS2 sequencing method. Hi, uh, I'm Martin Galau. I'm uh, Dr. Yang's uh, uh, students. I'm BSc students. I'm coming from Indonesia. And uh, my research field is about uh, nutrition for selfies. And I'm studying 